Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. More cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed positive in the CNMI. Also tonight, travel between Saipan and Guam will be on a halt starting this weekend. And unemployment assistance is being offered in the CNMI. We have the details. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. My family is on whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Since we um, installed the Docomo whole home Wi-Fi, what did you guys notice about it? When you pull up the driveway, it automatically connects. And I don't have to get out on the car right away and come upstairs to go on my phone. My favorite thing is that it doesn't buffer when I'm watching YouTube. Um, my favorite thing is that when Addy calls now, there's no lag like before it used to be where I couldn't see her sometimes and I have to hang up and then call her back and now I don't have to do that. You know what's a good thing too is that when you come over to visit, I could give you your own password. I can assign a time limit so that I can say that you can only be on it for one hour so that means you won't get in trouble from your mom. And then you can go home. <laughs> the thing that I love the most is that I can freeze the internet for periods of time so that we can enjoy dinner time like this. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? So I'll turn it back on after dinner. <laughs> Whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Docomo Pacific, better together. Jose and Pedro were born on the very same day. Jose liked to play sports. Pedro liked to play video games. Jose's favorite word was pass. Pass me the ball. Pedro's favorite word was pass too. Pass me the rice. Jose is retired and has both time and energy. His life is just beginning. Pedro has diabetes, hypertension, and gout. His life could soon end. Eat less, play more, live longer. Brought to you by PHI, the pharmacy you can trust. Off a day, Tiruwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. Four new COVID-19 cases have been confirmed in the CNMI. Four new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed in the CNMI. A 70-year-old male who passed away on March 30th, and three females ages 14, 60, and 77. We sent these specimens over the last few days. Um, within the last three days for sure that we've sent the majority of these specimens. Um, obviously we're, we're continuing to work with the Guam Public Health Laboratory. Right now there is a limited capacity on, of testing kits around the country. General testing is not available around the country, including Hawaii and the territories. So right now we're limited within our capacity of testing. We understand that. This government is trying to make sure that we upgrade our current facilities here at CHCC so we can conduct on-island testing hopefully by the end of April, towards the, towards the beginning of May. Governor Ralph Torres, the COVID-19 Task Force, and CHCC has announced 31 specimens have been submitted for COVID-19 testing to the Guam Public Health Laboratory as of April 1st. 19 have been processed with six positive cases and 13 negative cases, and CHCC is still awaiting the results of 12 specimens. You're going to start seeing these announcements come out within the next few days. Um, we, can, we can see results from these 12 specimens as early as tomorrow. And then the remaining of that will be on to the next day and on to the next day. Um, right now, we're looking at possibly having about five of our specimens tested at a time. While some of the confirmed cases here in the CNMI have a travel history from a location with positive COVID-19 cases, others do not suggesting community transmission. This new finding of cases occurring among those without close contact is a definitive factor of showing that there is, in fact, community transmission here in CNMI. Community transmission means people may have been infected 
within our community and not just imported from another COVID-19 outbreak jurisdiction. Contact tracing is being conducted by CHCC of all the confirmed cases. CHCC with the task force has already initiated contact tracing for the most immediate contacts. This includes close family members, friends, associates of these four confirmed cases, along with the other two cases that we've had. Bautista says those that have confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the CNMI will continue to be quarantined at Kanoa Resort. And individuals that are being quarantined due to travel will be transferred to PIC to finish out the 14-day isolation. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell. All flights in and out of the CNMI on United Airlines will be suspended beginning this weekend. United Airlines has agreed to Governor Torres's request of suspending all flights between Saipan and Guam. The request was basically to suspend all flights coming into and out of Guam, into and out of the CNMI from Guam, effective immediately. Um, United has agreed to suspend all flights. The suspension of flights will be in effect from April 6th to April 30th. There are two issues, right? So, one, we have very limited resources on the ground in terms of human resource capacity as well as uh, just, you know, healthcare care uh, facilities here. And so, currently, we have a mandatory 14-day quarantine. Although we have numerous numbers of hotels, we still need a lot of people to be able to go and properly... Uh, service and man, those facilities should be, should the isolation and containment facilities uh, be increased from, from Kanoa and expand to other, uh, you know, where other facilities are used. And so that's very important. Um, now uh, we don't have to worry about additional people outside of the Commonwealth. Uh, you know, we, we don't have to deal with, with people coming in. This will allow the task force, the governor, um, the healthcare providers to focus with you know, those who are already here, do the proper contract, uh, contact door street, allow them to basically, um, you know, provide the urgent medical air if, if, if needed, specific to, you know, the needs of our community and those who are already here. But this suspension will not affect U.S. Postal Services, air shipment of cargo, and medevac transport to and from Guam. The act was basically to, uh, to specific to the limitations of people traveling in and out of the CNMI. Um, we ask that cargo, mail, um, COVID-related response activities, um, and medical evacuation, you know, inter-island and in and out of the Commonwealth will be exempted. So none of that will be impacted. Um, and EPA has basically shared, you know, additional public notices as to who to contact with regards to those types of services. The flight between Guam and Saipan has been canceled for April 2nd, whereas April 5th will be the last operating flight before the suspension on United. Star Marianas has also agreed to suspend inner island travel in efforts to reduce the spread as well, with suspension of flights from Saipan to Tinian and Saipan to Rota beginning Friday. There's been an outcry basically from the islands of Tinian and Rota to limit travel in and out of those islands, given, given the limited health care capacity, right? There's just no facilities there to be able to handle a COVID spread. Um, we, don't, we don't have doctors. We don't have hospital beds. We don't have the resources that are currently here on Saipan. So the intent basically is to just stop travel altogether to keep people to shelter in place. And um, at first, you know, as we stated before, we don't have the authority to basically suspend life, but um, we've just gotten word that Star Mariana has agreed to voluntarily suspend inter-island travel and basically just limit, um, limit it to cargo activities, medevac, and transportation of mail. Hines says there will be no exceptions once the suspension is in place. If one must take an emergency flight out of the CNMI, she says Star Marianas will coordinate a charter flight. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell. What does the federal legislation mean for CNMI employers and employees? Our Chris Nelson speaks with Secretary of Labor Vicky Benevente. Well, the CNMI hunkers down with stay-in-place recommendations and social distancing requirements. Hundreds and perhaps thousands have or could lose jobs. Hotels are shuttered. Restaurants closed and the island economy, which is built on tourism, 
has been gutted. Federal legislation, including unemployment assistance, something that's never been offered here in the Marianas, offers some hope. But who and how, and perhaps more importantly, when, are questions that Vicki Benevente and the Department of Labor are currently sifting through. What are some things that, uh, I know you've been looking at, at this, Vicki, what are some things that employees um, who may have been either furloughed or the company's not operating right now or, or hours have been reduced, well, is there anything that they should be doing right now as, as you work through the, the federal government guidelines for this new legislation? I'd like to recommend, Chris, that they put together their documentation from their employers. First and foremost, a letter of certification that uh, states who this employee is, name and position, um, his regular work hours and his reduction in hours. If there was a reduction in hours or if they were laid off, then the dates are very important, effective date, um, as with any unemployment insurance program, which we don't have. Um, What's really important is an ID, a valid ID, <clears throat> photo ID, and proof of citizenship. If they have a passport, that would be helpful. We're still not sure of uh, who will be eligible as far as the PUA, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, is concerned. But let's just all be prepared, yeah, in case it's, say, it's across the board. Uh, all uh, workers who have been laid off or uh, reduced in working hours will be eligible. We don't know for sure. So um, there is a question whether these these PUA benefits will apply equally to uh, U.S. citizens or non-resident workers. That, that hasn't been answered yet? Not yet. Um, I'm in line with the other states and territories with the same type of questions. Who is eligible um, and for how long? Uh, according to the law, I believe it's nine months. And again, how much is the benefit? So all those questions with the guidelines will be uh, forwarded to CNMI Department of Labor as soon as they finalize it. You know, every day and, and twice a day, actually, I'm reading as much as I can and, and emailing my contacts in the federal government who have been very, very um, receptive to my questions. And I get the same response, not yet. We're not ready with the answers. We're preparing the guidelines. We are going to let you know as soon as it's finalized, and then I'm sure they'll send it out to all the states and the territories at one time. Vicki, what does it mean we have a large non-resident workforce here, and the immigration status is tied to employment? So if you have companies that are either furloughing or, um, or laying off non-resident workers, what does that, what does that mean? Well, it is an immigration issue. What I've done as, um, as a department is I've requested the business community to inform the Department of Labor, CNMI, of what has been happening as a result of the COVID-19 uh, impact on their business. Um, so these notifications from businesses have told us uh, what they've done, whether it's closing the shop or reducing the hours of employees or laying off employees, so that we have documentation of all these businesses and we have over a hundred businesses who have notified us and it's looking like it's going to be at least 2,000 persons who are out of a job or reduced hours drastically. Um, this is a really um, devastating impact to our island. And so as far as immigration is concerned, we haven't gotten updates yet from the USCIS or US Department of Labor as far as what it would do to the certification of contract workers in the future. And that's why I think it's important to get the notification from our businesses here so that we can show our federal partners that we've been in contact with the business community, the private sector, and they've been telling us this, this, is, this is their challenge and this is what they're doing as far as um, mitigating the impact um, and staying healthy, most importantly. So I, don't, I can't tell you for sure what kind of an impact it will have on the contract workers at this time, Chris, but when we do get their notification, we'll be sure to disseminate that information out to the public also. Um, how soon have, have you been able to get an answer from the federal government on how soon you might have some of these answers? 
not an indication, but um, in the past, for example, when we were working with our federal partners for the disaster unemployment assistance, right after the subtype on YouTube, um, regulations and guidelines were issued several days after the law, or not the law, but the declaration was issued by President Trump. And so when we signed the agreement with U.S. Department of Labor on Sunday, just as a few days ago, we're hoping we can get this um, PULA program within the next few days, but there's no guarantee. There's a lot of um, details to be ironed out, including the questions the CNMI has, and I'm sure other territories, Guam, Samoa, and uh, the other territories have their own set of questions with regards to their unemployment issues. And those territories also don't have unemployment insurance. So I think each of us have unique questions, unique situations, but we're all in a very dire situation as far as the economy and employment. Due to the recent confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the CNMI, the public school system commissioner, Dr. Alfred Ada, has moved all classes online for the remainder of the school year. PSS Commissioner of Education, Dr. Alfred Ada, informed teachers and students just last week that all classes will be finished from home through a distance education program allowing for classes to be finished through a packet given at the school to do at home or through online learning. But after further evaluation and receiving information that COVID-19 has been confirmed in the CNMI, Commissioner Ada has made the decision that all classes will be online. Right now, the existing uh, online programs still continue. So those are the AP classes and the other courses. Some students were on the online class before the COVID-19. That still continues. The teachers are working from home, communicating with the um, students. But what about students who do not have access to a computer or Internet? Trying to reach out to, to the other um, um, the companies. We have Docomo and Itini offering um Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi services, but, um, you know, we are, I just want the community to know that, that we are addressing that, that population, the families that don't have. Commissioner Addis says they are working to get these seniors on schedule with completing classes, but states there will be no graduation ceremony. Graduation for seniors, uh, again, the high school principals are still meeting on La via Google Online Hangouts, trying to iron that out. Um, what is the best thing to do and how can we do it? I spoke to the parents, uh, Parent Advisory Council, uh, informing them that uh, for now, graduation is being suspended. We don't know, come May or June, if things clear out, we may probably revert to another plan. But for now, it's safe to say that uh, not to have a graduation ceremony. A big concern Commissioner Ada expresses is trying to find money to avoid a payless payday for the teachers and staff. Dr. Addis says federally paid teachers will continue to receive 100% of their salary, whereas the locally funded personnel are only getting paid 70% of their salary. Some got 70, some got 100. So over 200 people, over 200 um, personnel were federally funded. They got their full and they will be getting their full um, salary again this coming pay period. But for the locally funded, it's 70%, and I am trying to figure out how to get some more money for our next pay period. To provide a bit of relief to the teachers, Dr. Addis says the $1,000 incentive checks that were scheduled to be distributed in June will be given to teachers by this Friday. Commissioner Ada has a message to PSS staff and students. The future seems to be coming to us faster than ever. And uh, I think we all understand it's not going to slow down, right? With technology, the social media anxiety in the environment, the rate of change is not going to slow down at all. And as PSS, we are leaders of learners. And what we need to do is to move faster and stay ahead of the change. Change is very hard, and the rate we are having to deal with change and the uncertainty, it seems so insane with this COVID-19. 
um, the environment dictates the change and, and I have shifted my mindset and I hope you guys too. I just want to share with everyone that we, to hang in there because this is an uphill battle. But for every up, uphill battle, there is a time when things will slow down and we will prevail. So we just need to move with the change, go faster, and try to beat it as much as we can. A male is behind bars after striking a female at a poker establishment in an attempted robbery. Michael Jordan Cabrera has bail set at $50,000 on charges of attempted robbery and assault and battery. On March 22nd, the CDMI Department of Public Safety received a call reporting an injured person at the 888 Poker Establishment. DPS officers responded to the scene where they found the victim on the floor moaning in pain. Officers were told by witnesses around the establishment that the suspect had asked the victim to cash out his winnings. When the victim walked out of the cashier booth, she was struck by the suspect. Cabrera then allegedly tried to gain access to the cashier's booth before fleeing. An arrest warrant was issued by Judge Joseph Camacho. Cabrera was arrested in Chalancanoa on March 27th and transported to the Department of Corrections, where he was booked and detained. Coming up, you may want to make sure you have a mask before heading out to some stores on this island. We tell you why after the break. Mom, are you sure? What about the shutters? And do you have your medicine? Don't worry about us, love, okay? You take good care of yourself. I'm in love. Yeah, sorry. The power went out, so I had to light up all the candles. Yeah. Yes, baby, yeah. I'm just glad our home phone's working and we're able to contact you. Mom, are you sure? What about the shutters? And do you have your medicine? Don't worry about us, love, okay? You take good care of yourself. I'm in love. Yeah, sorry. The power went out, so I had to light up all the candles. Yeah. Yes, baby, yeah. I'm just glad our home phone's working and we're able to contact you. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. More hands have been added to the force that combats the spread of COVID-19. Sally Lemus has the details. The CNMI Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services has increased the number of personnel as part of the governor's COVID-19 task force. About 40 firefighters has been activated after receiving knowledge of the two positive cases of COVID-19 in the CNMI. DFEM's primary objectives are to transport all incoming passengers from Saipan International Airport to the designated quarantine facility, which is Kanoa Resort. Upon arriving at the facility, DFEM's personnel are to then escort the airline passengers to their assigned rooms. DFEMs are also in charge of delivering drop-off items to rooms of patients and persons under investigation. For PUIs coming in from CHCC, DFEMS personnel are responsible for transporting them to the quarantine site. Decontamination after every drop-off, transport, and contact with any quarantine person is being conducted as well. DFEMS personnel, along with CHCC medical personnel, remain on standby for 24 hours for any emergency transport needed, and they conduct health assessment to all inbound passengers. 
DFEMS continues to support the governor's COVID-19 task force and its emergency medical support function. Some local establishments are requiring customers to take precautionary measures before entering the store. All Jotin stores, Ace Hardware, and the Jotin Superstore are requiring customers to wear a face mask or any protective face cover when entering the store. Store hours for all Jotin locations are from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. The Minamco shopping hour is from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. at the Jotin Susupi, Jotin Garapan, and Jotin Dandan. Dan. And Jotin officials are asking customers to have one shopper per family to limit the overcrowding inside the store. Also, Star Sands Plaza and the I Love Saipan outlet is requiring customers to wear a face mask to shop inside the store. And also states they are selling face masks at the door if you do not have one. On Guam, a doctor is warning residents not to get too confident with the low numbers of confirmed cases. KUAM reports. Hafadeh Sinamai, here's what's making news on Guam. A doctor on the governor's physician's advisory group warns that the relatively low number of positive COVID-19 cases doesn't mean Guam is out of the woods yet. Instead, he warns that the island could mimic the situation in New York in a matter of weeks. Chris Barnett has more. During our morning radio show containing COVID, Dr. Felix Cabrera of the Governor's Physicians Advisory Council warned island residents not to get too confident about our COVID-19 numbers. Numbers don't lie, but Cabrera said when it comes to positive COVID-19 cases, the numbers aren't painting the full picture. The harsh reality is that, um, you know, regardless of what's reported on a daily basis of, of how many positives uh, there are in Guam, we have to understand the the, the main um, caveat uh, in these results, or in other words, the main uh, uh, underlying issue that you can't use it to nece necessarily relate to what the presence of COVID uh, is on Guam because we've limited the testing and we restricted uh, the testing to priority groups. The number of the positives we have is not reflective of what's actually in the community anymore. Last week, the COVID-19 response team announced priority testing for hospital and ER patients with COVID-19 symptoms, people with chronic diseases and COVID-19 symptoms, healthcare workers and first responders with symptoms, and elderly with symptoms. Cabrera telling KUAM it was necessary to first test these groups since they would be hit hardest by the virus. And the reality is that the, the, vulnerable, the vulnerable group are not the main carriers on the island and, the, and they're not the main uh, spreaders of the, of the disease. It's everyone else. And that, so that's why our, our, our common call is, to, is for everybody to assume that you have it and assume that everyone else has it. And while other jurisdictions have flattened the curve by conducting massive testing for the virus, efforts have been underway to increase Guam's capability to test more people through various avenues like commercial testing and sending samples off-island for testing. But Guam only has the ability to run 40 tests a day on island. Testing was limited to the priority groups because there had been, quote, a shortage of the supplies needed to conduct advanced accurate testing for COVID-19. That's according to a Joint Information Center release. Now, since public health has only been conducting just 20 tests a day for the last few days, Cabrera said results being reported may have the public feeling a false sense of hope when, in fact, our island may be standing on the edge of the COVID-19 cliff. It gives a skewed view of what the, what's happening on the island right now. Um, based on our, our current estimations that we're probably about three weeks behind what, what we're seeing uh, stateside, uh, in particular like New York. Um, and so we're still in the very, very, very early stages of this. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. And stay connected via our KUA mobile news app. Follow us on any of the social media platforms and sign up for our weekly email newsletter, KUAM Digital Digest on KUAM.com. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Stay tuned because coming up after the break is your weather report.
Hi, I'm Mel, a certified ophthalmic assistant here at Mariana's Eye Institute. Dry eyes can become more prevalent as you get older. It can also be stimulated by medication or environmental conditions. Dry eye is a very common condition. Perhaps as many as 30 to 40 percent of people will develop it during their lifetime. The symptoms that people have most commonly are, I've got sand in my eye. It feels like I got dirt, grit, something's in my eye. Frequently the eye will water then because of this irritation and people then will have blurry vision from all the watering of their eyes. Dry eyes can be diagnosed here with an eye exam and are often treated with drops to increase lubrication. If your eyes are frequently dry, it's time to seek some help. This has been Dr. Dennis Williams of the Mariana Science Institute. My family is on whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Since we um, installed the Docomo whole home Wi-Fi, what did you guys notice about it? When you pull up the driveway, it automatically connects, and I don't have to get out of my car right away and come upstairs to go on my phone. My favorite thing is that it doesn't buffer when I'm watching YouTube. Um, my favorite thing is that when Addy calls now, there's no lag like before it used to be where I couldn't see her sometimes when I have to hang up and then call her back, and now I don't have to do that. Okay. You know what's a good thing too is that when you come over to visit, I can give you your own password. I can assign a time limit so that I can say that you can only be on it for one hour, so that means you won't get in trouble from your mom. And then you can go home. <laughs> the thing that I love the most is that I can freeze the internet for periods of time so that we can enjoy dinner time like this. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? So I'll turn it back on after dinner. <laughs> Whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Docomo Pacific, better together. And here is your weather report. Today we had a high of 88, a low of 77, 62% humidity. Tomorrow, partly cloudy with isolated sh light showers, east winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tomorrow we'll have a high of 88, a low of 76, seas 6 to 8 feet, sunrise 6 12 a.m., high tide 11 47 a.m., low tide 7.51 p.m. and sunset at 6.30 p.m. And thank you for tuning in to your KSPN2 news show. We'll catch you back here on Friday.